the next drug under antiviral is loviride so what would be the structure of loviride so here we have two rings and in center we have this one that is ch3 co nh2 i mean ch co nh2 so this would be the parent for this structure okay so whenever we want to name a compound we have to remove the substituents and instead of the substituents we have to put hydrogen so because of that we are putting one hydrogen instead of that we are putting one hydrogen means we are getting ch3 co nh2 already we have known ch3 co h is acetic acid so ch3 co nh2 is acetamide so what you are getting the parent compound that is acetamide so with the acetamide this group would be attached and this would be attached so we will see the chemical name okay so everything is attached with the second portion of acetamide so to open bracket and here we have first we are going to tell this so two acetyl 5 methyl this is phenyl amino so what is it in the second carbon what is attached 2 acetyl 5 methyl phenyl amino this one and again in the second carbon what is attached 2 6 dichlorophenyl so acetamide that should end with acetamide it is coming under non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor now we will see the next drug that is called delaveridin ok so this would be the structure of delaveridin so what are all present here so this already we have known this is indole fusion of pyrrole with benzene that can be called as indole and this is this we have known this is called piperazine this is pyridine so three rings it is having one is indole piperazine and pyridine ok and in, uh, in the fifth portion of indole what is attached is CH3 SO2 NH so if it is CH3SO2NH2 that is called methane sulfonamide. So, what, uh, what would be the parent for this? Um, this would be the parent for delaveridin. So, that is called indole 5 yl methane sulfonamide. That is the parent for delaveridin. Okay. So, with that, what is attached in the second portion? Carbonyl is attached. With the carbonyl, piperacin is attached, and with that, pyridine would be attached. So, we will tell the chemical name. So, everything is attached with the second carbon of indole. So, second, in that carbonyl is attached, no, with that piperazine, atta uh, piperazine is attached. In the fourth portion of piperazine only, we are adding pyridine. That is why, so four open bracket, in that, in the pyridine, third portion we have isopropyl amino. So, three isopropyl amino, pyridine, second portion of pyridine is attached with that. So, pyridine 2 YL. This is piperazine 1 YL. First portion would be attached. That is why piperazine 1 YL carbonyl. And this is here hydrogen is attached with the nitrogen. I mean in first portion that is why 1 H. 1 H indole 5 YL methane sulfonamide. So, what are all present in delaveridin? Indole, piperazine, pyridine and with the pyridine we have isopropyl amino group and in the indole fifth portion we have methane sulfonamide. It is presented as mesylate. Mesylate means it is a salt of methane sulfonic acid or ester of methane sulfonic acid. Okay. So, what is methane sulfonic acid? CH3SO3. This is the sulfonic acid group. CH3SO3. Okay. So, uh, so, what are all present in delaveridin? We have indole, piperazine and pyridin. Now, we will see the next one that is called ribavirin. So, it is having two rings. Already we have known this ring. This is called D ribose or D ribofuranose. Rib ribose or ribofuranose. That is this one. And this is called triazole. It, I mean, if it is ending with zole, that is the 5 membered heterocyclic ring. And it is having three nitrogens. So, triaza, where they are added 1, 2, 4. So, that is why it is called 1, 2, 4 triazole. And that is fused with the D ribose or D ribofuranose. How they are fused? how these two are linked by means of beta linkage that is why 1 beta d ribofuranosyl 1 h here only we have 1 to 4 triazole means hydrogen would be here that is why it is 1 h 1 to 4 triazole 3 carboxamide amide otherwise called carboxamide ok. Now we will see the mechanism of ribavirin. Ribavirin is bioactivated by means of Viral and host cellular kinase, as we are getting monophosphate and also triphosphate. Now, this monophosphate node that is inhibiting the enzyme called inosin monophosphate dehydrogenase. What would be the action of this enzyme? That one converts inosin monophosphate into xanthin monophosphate. That is required for the synthesis of guanosin triphosphate that is important for DNA polymerase. So, 
which is important for DNA polymerase, inosin monophosphate dehydrogenase should be important. Why it is important? That one is converting inosin monophosphate into xanthine monophosphate that is required for guanosin triphosphate that is important for DNA polymerase. So, what is the role of ribavirin? That one is inhibiting that in this enzyme that is inosin monophosphate dehydrogenase that is why inosin monophosphate would not be converted to xanthine monophosphate and guanosin triphosphate would not be synthesized that is all. Okay. Now we will see HIV protease inhibitors. Before that we will see what is HIV already you all have known that is human immunodeficiency virus that is responsible for AIDS. Now we will see what is the role of HIV protease. This is an enzyme. This one converts viral polyproteins into individual functional HIV proteins and also enzymes. How they it is it would be converted by means of proteolytic cleavage. We are getting individual functional HIV proteins and also enzymes. Now it undergoes now it has a various structural components. No, they are assembled and we are getting mature HIV virions that is capable of infecting another cell. That is the role of HIV protease. Now we will see the role of HIV protease inhibitors. This in this inhibitors bind to HIV protease enzyme. By binding that what happens that cleavage no proteolytic cleavage of protein precursors that would be blocked. What is the role of protein precursors? They are necessary for the protection production of infectious viral particles. So that would be blocked by means of by means of that viral replication would be prevented. That is all about HIV protease inhibitors. These are the examples for HIV protease inhibitors. All should end with the NAV, saquenavir, endinavir, retinavir, nelfenavir, amprenavir, etc. Now we will see the first drug. Saquenavir. So, this is the structure of Saquenavir. So, what all we have? This you all have known this is quinolin. Here we have decahydroisoquinolin. Why it is called decahydro? If it is isoquinolin, we should have 5 bonds inside here that would be saturated. So, we are getting decahydroisoquinolin and we have this what it is CONH2, CONH2 these are all carboxamides. So, what would be the role of carboxamide here? This is important to inhibit HIV protease. So, here what all we have? Quinolin, decahydroisoquinolin and the important thing is that carboxamide group. This would be important for inhibiting HIV protease. Okay? And this no saquinavir should be combined with reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Okay? Examples for that is AEZT and DDC. Already we have known AEZT is azidothymidin otherwise called as zidovudin. DDI means that is dideoxyinosin otherwise called as didanosin. DDC is dideoxycytidin otherwise called as zalzitabin. So, what are all present in saquinavir? Quinolin, decahydroisoquinolin and it is having that carboxamide group. Next one is indinavir. Look at the structure of indinavir. What are all present? Here we have pyridine and here we have piperazine. That two are connected by means of methylene bridge. So, pyridine and piperazine would be connected by means of methylene bridge and here we have what is that? Pentanoic acid amide derivative. So, 5 carbons. 5 carbon acid pentanoic acid is an amide, C1H2 is amide. So, pentanoic acid amide derivative and second carbon is having benzyl group. And here, this is called dihydroindane. Indane means benzene ring, this one is 5 membered ring without bond. This is called indane. Indane means that should have bond, one bond. So, that is called indine. Now, compare this one with this one, one bond is left. For a bond, we have to add two hydrogen. That is why it is called dihydroindine. So, what are all present in the structure of indinavir? Pyridine, piperazine and here we have dihydroindine. In between these two, we have pentanoic acid amide derivative and second carbon is having benzyl. Here also, amide is present. But it is currently, it is not recommended due to its side effects. Okay, now, we will see the last drug that is called retinavir. So, this would be the structure of retinavir. What are all we have in the structure? This is called 1,3-thiazole. Here 1,3-thiazole we have. Here also 1,3-thiazole. So, two 1,3-thiazole rings here in the 1,3-thiazole what is added? Isopropyl group is added and here we have a valent structure. Okay, valent in the ring and we have carbamate ester. So, what are all we have in the structure of retinavir? Two 1,3 thiazole rings are present, and in the 1,3 thiazole isopropyl group is there, and here we have a valine and also carbamate ester. That's all about antiviral agents.